So I figured that since last time I had a video go viral when I did the uh, Young Thug interview, I figured, hey, why not do a review of it? I did a review video, and that video got a ton of views. So I figured that this is something that it seems like people are at least a little bit interested in is uh, me reviewing interviews that I've done. Because I reviewed the Young Thug one and people seemed to like it. And I would like to talk at least a little bit about what exactly went down with the Dame Dash interview. Because a lot of people were pretty shocked by this whole affair. Uh, before I get into that, I do want to say like, comment, and subscribe. And also uh, drop a comment down below. Yeah, well not also because I said it twice. But also, nojumper.com. We got a bunch of good stuff up there. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So the Dame Dash interview. First off, one thing that I think a lot of people didn't realize is that I had no idea that the reason that, that me and Dame Dash were going to end up talking about something uh, so topical, something so so personal to him. Like my publicist got me the Dame Dash interview and I was not thinking at all about how uh, it was going to be received in the sense of Jay-Z coming up. Like I figured that I was going to have to talk about Rockefeller and everything, but I figured that that wasn't the main thing that I was really going to try to focus on for the interview because, you know, that kind of conversation has been done to death. And anybody, like if you go and look at uh, the Breakfast Club interview that they did with Dame Dash a while back, uh, check it out because DJ Envy tries to talk about um, – he tries to talk about the early days of Rockefeller and Dame Dash pretty much just tells him to shut up. And it is really something because, you know, you just don't see that a lot in interviews where the guest just tells the the, the interviewer to just shut up. But so I was kind of thinking that like, you know, I was a little intimidated to really be bringing up Jay-Z that tough because, you know, it's also it's just kind of it's weird to just throw dirt on the subject because you know that he's not. 100% happy with where he's at in his career in comparison to his prior business partner. You don't really want to rub dirt in the wounds. You want to find like a, a tasteful way to, to bring it up. But the thing is, is that when I was talking to my girl about this interview before it happened, I started to say, you know, like, what are the things that I could talk about with Dame Dash that will make this interview go big? Like, what's the stuff that people really want to hear him talk about? And then my, my stupid brain that didn't immediately think of this is like, well, you know, Jay Z's in the news a lot lately. Yeah, the whole NFL thing, the Jermaine Dupree thing. Yeah, I could bring all that up. Boom. I knew that I had a destiny, a mission in this interview, which was to get Dame Dash to talk about Jay-Z's NFL deal and how Jay-Z allegedly uh, kind of swooped the job from uh, Jermaine Dupree. So we go into the interview, and it really did not take long for me to crack open this conversation. Uh which was kind of surprising um, when I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast where they discussed this interview, which, uh, by the way, was was nice to, to hear them all uh, say relatively pleasant things about me just because I, uh, I wasn't sure if uh, Rory was still holding uh, a grudge against me because we briefly got into it on Twitter at one point, but I, I guess not because he, he went out of his way to say, like, no offense to Adam-22 when he said this. And I totally – I get what he's saying because there's, like, a weird factor to the fact that – Dame Dash felt the need to have that conversation with me. Like, I'm, in comparison to him, you know, he's, he said he was 50. I'm like a kid in comparison to Dame Dash. And I'm obviously somebody who grew up just being a Rockefeller stan, just totally just a massive mega fan of the brand, of the label, of the music. So it was kind of crazy for Dame to just jump out the window, in my opinion, with somebody like me. Like Joe Budden said, he's like, he just met Adam, and then he's all of a sudden saying Jay Z ain't shit. That was crazy to me because it's kind of like, I don't know, like how much history do you have with this dude in order to to come out and say something like that? And especially because we've never heard Jay Z badmouth Dame Dash publicly, you know. So it did seem kind of like a a wild thing to hear him say, and a wild thing for him to be saying to me. And I wasn't really, like, nervous going into this interview. I'll, once in a while, I'll get nervous before, like, a big interview. But I wasn't that nervous because I just figured that, you know, I was just talking to Dame Dash like a normal guy. And I figured that it would be relatively smooth. And it was relatively smooth for the most part. It was a little tough to sort of rein him in at times. That was another thing Rory said on the, the Joe Budden podcast was just that, like, you know, when you have somebody like Dame Dash on, you just sort of let them go and you just try to steer them in certain directions like i mean they had a similar one 
recently when they had Nicki Minaj on, it was like the same thing. It's like you can't really – the energy of a Nicki Minaj or a Dame Dash is so strong that it's kind of like you can't – you can't really expect to be a big part of the conversation. You just have to try to – you have to start, try to like frame the interview – and set some parameters within reality. Because the truth is, is that Dame Dash, regardless of where he's at in his life, Dame Dash is always going to find a way to make it sound like everything is great and like his business is doing super good. And I don't doubt that he's experiencing success to some degree, but it's kind of like if you're just going to interview him and just let him paint this picture of his reality, you're not really doing your job as an interviewer because – you know, you need like, and it's not your job to jump in and say like, "Oh, well, I don't believe you that you're actually doing so great" or whatever. But you do have to sort of, you know, try to swing the pendulum back and get them to discuss things that you're asking them, as opposed to just sort of doing their own personal boilerplate thing, which is, uh, you know, it can be kind of tough. Uh, but overall, you know, interview went pretty well. I think the the, the explosive uh, explosive reaction was the part that was really kind of crazy. I really didn't realize it was going to be that big until uh, TMZ hit me up before it even came out, and they were like, yo, just so you know, we're going to be covering the shit out of this. And I was like, ah. Actually, I don't even know if they ended up covering it. Maybe they didn't in the long run. But, I mean, also, you know, we've heard we've heard Dame Dash diss Jay-Z to whatever extent repeatedly in the past but we've never heard him do it in such a direct way as he did on this one like that was pretty crazy to see just to see him be so sort of specific and straight up about it because we've never heard like him saying ain't shit about jay-z it was wild it was kind of hard to even believe he was saying it because you know and and, uh, you know i heard nadeska on uh, everyday struggle because they did an episode where they talked at length about this i heard her kind of laughing at me because she she said like oh he said define ain't shit in my defense nadeska it's kind of like you know he was saying ain't shit in a very specific way there like there's a lot of people that if you were to be like oh they ain't shit it's kind of like well Anybody who's listening could tell that the way that you're saying that they ain't shit means that they just literally ain't shit. They're just like nothing. But with like the way Dame was saying it about Jay, it was such a cutting insult because it was so obvious that what he actually meant by it was that Jay-Z has no principles. That Jay-Z is just a fundamentally bad person who would you know, gladly do something extremely devious in order to advance his situation and sort of like wholeheartedly co-signing the narrative that has been established or that was being attempted to be established by saying, you know, oh, uh, that, that Jay-Z stole his job right out from, from under Jermaine Dupri. To see Dame Dash so wholeheartedly co-sign that and to say it w- with so few words, to just say he ain't shit, to me that was... I wanted him to define it. I wanted him to elaborate on exactly what he meant by ain't shit just because I felt like, you know, he was saying something that we hadn't heard him say before there. Like, you quite often hear Dame Dash give his opinion on Jay-Z, but you never heard it quite like that before. Anyway, um, other notable things about the interview. Oh, should I reveal this? Yes, I'm going to reveal it. I'm just going to admit this. I paid Dame Dash for this interview. Now, it wasn't much. It was 500 bucks. But I paid 500 bucks. It was weird because we, you know, my publicist is going back and forth with his connect, whatever it is. And the publicist or the, the connect is like, yeah, you know, uh, is this a paid interview? And my publicist asked me, she's like, what am I supposed to say when people ask that? And I said, say no, say it's not paid. And, and so she said that. And then they come back to her and they say, um, we're going to need 500 bucks for his haircut and his driver. That was what they specified. Now, we thought this was pretty hilarious after because, like, his haircut, like, he literally does not have a hair on his head. And that's not a diss or anything. I'm sure there would be some hair on his head. But, you know, he rocks a baldy. Like, Dame Dash shaves his head. So, like, that sounds like a pretty expensive uh, haircut considering, like, he really needs a bic. I could have done it for free. But um, then the driver, the driver being 500 uh, I guess that makes a little bit more sense. I'm sure he lives up in the valley or off there somewhere. So, you know, for him to have a driver, drive him around for like two, three hours total, I guess I could see how, you know, maybe it's like a hundred or more dollars. I, I don't think they were requesting it 
because Dame Dash is broke or anything. That's not why I'm pointing it out. I'm just point. I think that they were just asking because they kind of know that we would say yes. You know, it's like that just that just makes sense. Like, of course, of course, you're gonna ask for it if you know that they're gonna say yes. It's kind of smart, just easy way to get an extra 500 bucks. I don't know. If I was in Dame Dash's position and I knew that somebody like me was presumably gonna make thousands of dollars uh, off of the interview, then it's like, hey, why not ask for 500? I respected it. But I wonder if he actually gets his haircut. I mean, I'm sure he has a barber who just shaves his head for him, right? Maybe he has his girl do it for him. I don't know. The other funny thing I thought about it was that, uh, so there's this this white girl that was, like, working uh, for Dame, and I guess she's a fan of No Jumper. So she had, like, told Dame, I think I met her one time before, like, at a party or just met her briefly. And so when she walks in, I, I, I don't remember meeting her. So I walk up to her, and I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And Dame immediately just – be, decides to become a little bit antagonistic as his per, his personality and he's just like huh i thought y'all already met damn i thought y'all was cool and the girl just looked like hell embarrassed right away like oh my god like why why did you say that why'd you put it like that it was hilarious and then also i told dame dash i don't rock condoms and then while i'm taking a picture with him and this girl he's just like raw dog he's kept calling me raw dog <laughs> because i all i told him i'll wrap it up which I also thought was pretty hilarious. So, I think that's the majority of my analysis of this whole thing. What was the thing called? God, I'm going to forget. I can't remember. There was like a thing he started talking about that was like some weird spiritual God whatever thing. And like a, a couple different people hit me up and were like, I cannot believe that Dame Dash tried to talk about that with you. But I don't, I can't remember what it was called. You guys are probably all going to remember in the chat. Whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm on live stream right now. I'll be back. Thursday, Thursday at like 6 or 7 p.m. I'll be back on live stream. If you guys want to get your songs played, that's what we're doing out here, playing people's songs. That's the best way to support the channel. Let us listen to your music. Uh, Nojumper.com slash, or excuse me, YouTube.com slash Nojumper. That's where we do it at. If you want to tune in to one of the streams, it would be very appreciated. Uh, thank you very much to everybody out there who watched this. Gang, gang. Peace. <laughs>